Amen. So I don't know、um, if you can believe it, we're in the sixth Sunday after Easter already. And one of the things that I think about、um, when I, especially when I read this passage this week, I was thinking about the power of memory. Because in our passage, Jesus talks about how the Holy Spirit will remind us of who He is. And, it, and that's very powerful.、Um, this past week, I was thinking about my family and Every year, my dad he did this important ritual so,、uh, where he would remember his mom who passed away even before, before I was born.、Uh, but in Korean tradition, they do this memorial where you remember those that passed. A lot of Korean Christians, especially the ones in America, don't do this tradition. But on my dad's side of the family, it's really interesting. They've been Christian for generations, which is kind of rare in, Christian, in Korean homes because Christianity didn't become.、Um, Widespread in Korea until after World War II. So, most Koreans you meet, they're like first generation or second or third generation Korean,、uh, Christian. But my dad's, on my dad's side of the family, they've been Christian for generations. So, when we do this memorial service,、um, and、I'll, I have a picture here. So, in Korean culture, you lay out food and you remember your ancestors. And in the traditional culture,、um, it's you believe that the ancestors are eating with you, right? So, my dad would do this somewhat kind of memorial, but it would turn into a worship service、uh, because my actual my paternal grandmother was a really strong Christian. And it's interesting because every year, When we would sit around, my mom would lay down food and we would sing songs and you know, have a hy- you know, lay out the hymnal. And my dad would share a story about my grandmother. And it was always a new story every year. The funny thing is, my dad never really talks about his family. You know, he's kind of a quiet, you know, first generation Korean man. Never talked about his siblings, never really talked about his family. Didn't really talk too much about his upbringing, except for talking about you know, walking two miles in the snow to school. Um, you know, he would share those kinds of stories, but he never really talked about his family. But every year when we would have this memorial service for my grandmother, he would share a story. And one of the stories he would talk about was how she would bring him to early morning prayer, so 5 30 in the morning. And she would wrap him in a blanket and, you know, kind of carry her on her, on her hip. And she would lay him down on the blanket so he'd like walk around. And he remembers hearing her pray. Crying out to God, praying for her children. He talks about how he remembers her making kimchi and sticking her hands in the fermented kimchi jars. And sometimes, every so often, there would be like a little pebble, right, or something, because it's, you know, the cabbage is coming from the ground. But these stories over the years really made me feel like I knew my grandmother, almost like I've met her before, when, when I never did. And that's really the power. Of memory. And I think that's what today's passage is about. So, as we are going through the Easter season and we celebrated the resurrection on Easter Sunday, we're thinking back to all the different things that Jesus said about what would happen after the resurrection. So, we are remembering the Last Supper, some of the things that He said. But we are really taking apart the promises He made and experiencing those promises as, as we celebrate the resurrection. During this Easter season. So, in today's passage, he promises the Holy Spirit, and he specifically says that if he starts off, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. So, he explains the Trinity, and this is something that we're realizing the Trinity that we will experience in full force after he resurrects. But he explains if anybody is really my disciple, you see the fruit in their lives. You see that they live it out. And then he explains that all this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom my Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Now, the word advocate, it means paraclete. You know, in Roman law, if you stood accused, You were, you were allowed a paraclete, someone to be on your side, someone to speak for you. And this is a really important person. If someone accuses you of something and you didn't do it, you have no witnesses, you have no, no bearing to stand, and you feel very vulnerable, 
A paraclete was someone on your side saying, no, this person did not do this. I could vouch for this person. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a powerful advocate that's on your side. When you feel like you have no one and no help or no support, the Holy Spirit is the power of God on your side. And then he specifically says that it will remind, it will, it will remind you of everything I have said, you, said to you. So that's what the Holy Spirit does. It brings up the memory of all of Jesus' teachings, all of God's promises, God's scripture, and it also reminds us of God's past faithfulness in our lives. And this is very important. Anyone listening to Jesus' words would completely understand, especially if you were Jewish. The entire Jewish faith is based on remembering. For example, when Moses leads the Israelites out of Egypt, right, that's the first great act that the God of Israel does. And after that, there's a reputation amongst all the surrounding nations of the power of the God of Israel because he was able to free them from slavery because of all the plagues and you know, everything that happened. The reputation spread that the God of Israel is very powerful. And afterwards, when they receive the Ten Commandments and they receive you know, God's word, God's promises, Moses specifically said, and God tells Moses, remember that I am the God that brought you out of slavery. Remember my commands. When you sit, when you rise, as you walk, teach them to your children. Remember, the entire basis of their faith is on remembering. If you think about the Passover, you know, they celebrate Passover in the tabernacle of the feasts where they set up a tent, you know, a lot of the really, um, really conservative um, Jews still do this. They'll set up tents and, you know, they'll, they'll stay there for a week remembering that they were in the desert. And these rituals remind them of who they are, remind them of God's past faithfulness. We have something very similar. We have communion. And as we do communion once a month, we remember Christ's death, his blood shed for us, his body broken for us. And in remembering, we experience something powerful. We experience the Holy Spirit connecting us and uniting us. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Jesus is saying, the Holy Spirit will remind us of everything that God said. Everything that Jesus taught us will remind us of God's past faithfulness. And that's very important. The Holy Spirit is on our side. We are not alone. And together as a church, as we come together, we all have our collective memories. We all have our experiences. We all remember how God has been good in our lives. And we bring those memories together as a church. And that's the power of faith. That's the power that we experience of God in our lives. As I shared this past, um, as I shared earlier, we celebrate our daughter's 10th birthday today. And this past week, I was remembering a lot. Um, I have a couple pictures. This is when she was like a couple months old. Yes, same smile. Very chubby baby. She was all cheeks. You see how tired my husband looks? We were so tired. She was such a difficult uh, toddler. And, um, you know, I was really remembering, you know, when we were trying to understand, you know, her, um, what she wanted, you know, because she couldn't really communicate. And it was just a very difficult time. And it specifically, we lived in IAEA for six months, and that's when she started preschool. Um, special needs preschool, and I remember that was a really challenging time. I remember, you know, one time while we were in IAEA, there was a birthday party across the street, and, you know, there was like candles and cake, and my husband and I were folding laundry, and we hear the door shut, and we just thought it was the wind for a second, and then we're like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right, and we went out, and she was running across the street, almost got hit by a car. It was like something from a movie. The car, like, dead stops. 
the, everybody across the street is screaming, and I'm chasing after her screaming. Everybody's screaming. And, you know, my, and my son still remembers this. My son started crying. And around that time, I felt like she was always putting herself in danger. And I was so upset. I was so um, in despair. But I remember during that time, you know, God reminding me, I'm here for you. I'm there. And what brought me through that season, even though it was really difficult, and it still continues to be difficult, what brought me through is in everything I faced with her, I'm bringing stories. I'm bringing my life. God has been faithful so many years, so many times where I felt like I was in situations that were hopeless, where I felt alone, where I felt like I had no help. God showed up so many times through people, through events in my life. So when I experienced these experiences, I felt God reminding me, I've never left you. I've never abandoned you. I'm with you today as, I was, as I've been with you in the past. I remember one time, uh, not too long after we moved to Kaimuki, she came home on the bus, and she had a bug. She was into bugs at the time. And, you know, she was taking off her shoes, and I was in the kitchen making a snack, and I just said, okay, let, let the bug go. And I was, like, cooking, and then I went to the bathroom, and then, you know, I come out, and she's gone. She's not in the carport. And then I told my husband, and then we were going nuts, searching around the house, where did she go? And then we were driving around the neighborhood, Turns out, because she, she knew I didn't want her to bring the bug in the house, she went down the street into someone's backyard and she was playing with the bug. And this was like 30 minutes of like us going nuts. And I remember um, that moment. I was like, God, what is going on? And I remember the story in the Bible where a father has a son that's always putting himself in danger because he's possessed by an evil spirit. And the father says, I want to believe, but help me with my unbelief. And in those moments, I say, God, I need to believe. I need to have faith right now. And this past week, I was remembering God's faithfulness during that season, during that difficult time. This past week, my daughter, he, she came home with this, this essay of us going to a shop, and it says, my trip to the shop. First, my mom, Audrey, and I drove to Sam's Club. Then we went to the watermelon section. They were small, green, and round. I put a green and small watermelon in my cart. Next, I went to the pies. I saw a blueberry pie, and it goes on and on about food. You know, she loves food. But I was reading this, and I was like, I didn't think she would ever be able to write. I didn't think she would ever be able to read. I didn't think that she would ever be able to learn her letters, you know, because at that time when she was in preschool, I can't tell you how many times I tried to teach her the ABCs. I tried to teach her things, and it was completely hopeless. You know, I couldn't even, she wouldn't even sit down for 10 seconds to read a book. And here she is coming home with a report on us going to Sam's Club together. I'm remembering God's faithfulness. It's not perfect, and we still struggle, but God has been faithful. God has been good. And I'm remembering that this week, and I think that's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the advocate, someone that's on our side, reminding us God has been faithful in the past. God will be faithful today and in the future. I'm so grateful for this church as I've heard all of your stories and the things that all of you guys have gone through and overcome. We remember together every Sunday God's faithfulness, that God is real, that God is good, that the power of Christ continues to move through the Holy Spirit in our lives and in this community. Let us continue to remember. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for the advocate, for the reminder that we have in the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for your past faithfulness. Thank you so much for all the things that you've done in our lives. Even though we face difficult situations today at times, situations that seem hopeless, we have the advocate and we remember your goodness, 
We pray that those memories will continue to stir our faith, that those memories would continue to come alive. May we never forget who we are and how far you've brought us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing the song, sing the response song, Don't Be Afraid by John Bell. stand for the closing hymn, I Come to the Garden, uh, hymn 314. Please follow along with the lyrics on your screen or on your bulletin. I'm sorry. This, the, we continue our Ukraine relief uh, fund as the war continues on, and we will let you know when we're going to close out um, this fund. But if you'd like to donate, please do so by writing a check to the church and writing Ukraine on the memo line, or you could also donate in the same way through PayPal. We continue to need help um, counting offering and uh, bookkeeping. So if anybody's interested, if anybody knows of anyone that's interested, uh, please let the church, please let us know. We continue our Holy Moly curriculum, um, and we're going to be doing this for, for a while now. We're going through the New Testament, and after this section, we're going to go through the Old Testament. Um, with a small break when we when I go through when we go to New Jersey, but we're really enjoying the curriculum and we're really glad that we're able to do this. We had a great time last night at our youth Bible study. Um, just a fun time of discussion. I don't know what what's happening here in the picture. <laughs> we're just uh, joking around, and it was a really great time just discussing the Bible, sharing, talking, and praying together. So we're going to try to have um, one every month. Um, so we're going to have one again in June, and a dinner will be provided, and we'll have discussion, prayer time, very kind of loose format, um, and play some games. But we want to try to have one a month and then um, and, and have other programs as well. So we have the Holy Moly and one Bible study a month at least for the youth. And, oh, yesterday we had district conference as well. Um, so that was really great, um, having, we had it virtually, and we did, you know, all of our voting and, and everything, and I'm so thankful for uh, this church, and Deanna is our lay leader that, you know, was able to participate and vote. Yeah, every year is a different voting thing, so this year it was, you know, it was good, it was uh, innovative and new, but... Um, a lot of different things happening in our district. We were able to upgrade um, the Humu uh, handbook and, and different things. Um, I think in previous years, they invited lay leaders um, and community chairs to attend in person. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
please sign up for the Natsunoya Tea House June 21st at 11 a.m. Okay, that's all the announcements for now. We will now have a time of offering. Offering. Time. Corey. <laughs> Please drop your offering in the offering plate on your way out or donate through PayPal. Please join me in prayer. God of the mountains and the valleys, of the dry places and oceans, your voice speaks to us across creation. The flowers and trees sing of your majesty, and the stars of the night speak of how much we still don't know. As we offer our gifts to you and speak our words of gratitude, Help us to hear your voice anew. Give us ears to hear, faith to believe, and determination to truly listen to how you would send us into the hurting world. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the doxology. Now we will close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace, now and forevermore. Amen.